Welcome to another episode of That Inner Voice podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer McKenzie, the Conscious Living Coach and owner of Luna Spirit Wellbeing. Today, I'm joined by Colette Stevenson, uh, creator of Poster Grid. Hello, Colette. How are you doing? Hello, Jen. I'm great, thanks. I'm just actually really excited to be here. It's my day off. What a great way to spend my day off. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I'm... um recording podcasts all day and which is amazing <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on I'm really excited to hear about you and your journey um and this podcast is all about mental health um getting talking about the things that people don't want to talk about and breaking mm. the stigma uh, around mental health and I will talk about positive recovery and recovery can be from anything we talk a lot about um on here about addiction recovery mental health recovery breakdown grief um illness recovery so you know anything goes really so um okay. would you like just to share a little about who you are and, and what you do and why you do it yeah, so I'm Colette. I uh, I created Poster Grid because, um, which is a, a method of posting on Instagram that doesn't require planning but looks amazing. Uh, basically, because um, I discovered last year I had ADHD, which explained everything. Uh, explained why I can't plan, can't organize. I don't know where to put anything. It explains all the things that I kept my whole life. I had this what is wrong with me mm -hmm. thing going on because I knew I wasn't incapable and yet with basic stuff I was incapable so <laughs> and I couldn't understand it and, and nobody else could understand it either and I couldn't yeah. explain it like somebody would say you know put put these glasses away and I'd be like okay and then I didn't know where they went it's really simple stuff right? I just don't know where, where does it go I don't know I'm going to just put it away. I'm like, but where? I, I I can't. It's that. And I do, I'm the same with my folders. I'm the same with my information. I don't know where to put stuff, even my thoughts. So, okay. Right. That's really so, interesting because I also um, have been on the road to finding out that I have ADHD or, or actually on the autistic spectrum. So yes. Been, uh, this year has been like a real journey of discovery for me as well after suffering a lot and being labeled with many many mental health conditions so what what triggered the the diagnosis or the the road to diagnosis well, of I'm officially not diagnosed but I know so yeah. it's it, it's it's hard to explain. I think for people who are not on this journey, they're like, "Well, how can you be if you don't have a diagnosis?" But mm. it's not it's not a sickness. So it's mm. not like you need a medical professional to say you are sick and this is the treatment that you need. It yeah. is a, a it's a brain type. It's a neurotype, mm -hmm. and you know you know your brain, right? You know what you've struggled with in your life. You know what's been easy in your life, and when you see laid out in front of you your brain, you go. <laughs> Ooh, it's amazing um but it started so I always knew um I, I always knew I was not quite the same as other people but I always just assumed everyone was not quite the same as everyone else so I never really saw anything that was different about me as a problem but I did not I couldn't understand how other people just knew how to do stuff Mm -hmm. that I didn't know how to do that was just a regular theme in my life <clears throat> and it didn't really bother me too much I did have some um episodes with depression and other things but they were unrelated I think to the ADHD and I did struggle massively with rejection sensitivity which I didn't even know existed we can talk about that a bit later on but I had no idea that existed until I learned about ADHD I was like oh penny drop a really light bulb moment <laughs> so many uh, but when when my son was born um so he's eight now but when he was born um I realized that he was autistic when he was a newborn now I, I'd worked a lot with very young children and babies and I'd worked a lot with children who are neurodivergent and I related very strongly with them I just thought I was a good teacher <laughs> I was like oh, I only relate to you because I get it I get what the struggle is I didn't understand the kids who found just conversation easy um anyway that's a different topic but my I've gone all over the place haven't I so my son was born and he, I recognized very early on that the way that he fed was not the way a, a typical a neurotypical baby feeds in that he would had no interest in my face no interest in my eyes no interest in looking at me um and I didn't say anything to anybody because I thought everyone would think I was a neurotic mother 
not that there's anything okay. wrong with being neurotic mm -hmm. because it's just a state of mind and if you are feeling that way and you're feeling vulnerable then you should be able to seek help you shouldn't think i can't say anything in case people think this yeah, but yeah. i i recognize that my son possibly was not developing in a typical way um, and I didn't say anything. And then he just kept hitting his milestones. Mm. But what was interesting was the way that he was hitting his milestones. He was hitting them slightly off center, um, mm. but not in a way that was alarming to anybody. Right. Yeah. So I think this is what can often happen with things like ADHD and mm. autism and any other neurodivergent thing yeah. is when you're developing in your own path, you can still hit the milestones you can still meet minimum expectations or expectations and you can exceed expectations yeah. and so nobody thinks mm -hmm. there's a problem and there isn't a problem it's just that you will you do have different needs i did fortunately with my son so by the time he was 16 months old he knew all his abcs um he has he has um, something called hyperlexia which is where the visual processing part of the brain is they say overdeveloped i just say okay. it's developed in a different way so he could he learned to read before he learned to understand speech it's quite right. unusual okay. um and well, it was really really yeah it's it's amazing it was okay. it's fascinating to watch that 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 kind of style of development because i was an early years teacher and i used to blog about not forcing kids to read playing with kids engaging with kids letting them have fun with their things and not forcing abcs down their down their throats and then i had the 16 month old who knew all his abcs uppercase and lowercase and i'm like oh my god i can't write about this because everyone's gonna think that i'm not <laughs> yes. i'm doing the wrong i'm doing the, the opposite of what i'm preaching and i was like oh my god and i it was weird the the self-talk that i had at that time mm. anyway i with further research i became convinced I knew my son was autistic and I spoke to my husband and he realized it as well um and we were living in Japan at the time so realized that we'd need to move to a country where we'd be able to advocate for him my Japanese and my husband's Japanese was not strong enough to be able to advocate for our son and his needs um so we relocated to the UK but when I realized my son was autistic I knew it was hereditary and I thought, is that what's been going on with me? Okay. So that's when I started looking into it. I thought maybe I'm autistic. Nobody believed that I was autistic. Yeah. Uh, but I, I started looking into it and I joined adult uh, communities of people with uh, made up of adult autistics. And I had conversations with people and there was a lot of crossover and a lot of similarities. But I didn't 100% connect. I still felt... I still felt like that no this isn't me this isn't what's going on i'm i'm not autistic and then i was posting on linkedin advertising my business on linkedin at the time and this person sent me a message and she said just curious do you have adhd and i was like no i don't think so i thought yeah, i might be autistic and she's like no i think you've got adhd let's have a conversation and she'd written books on adhd and things so had a conversation with her a lot of it made sense, but because mm. it seemed so helpful, I disregarded it. <laughs> oh, <it's> just, okay. <laughs> don't know why. Don't know why, but I thought, no, I'm, I, I don't want to go down that road. Because in my head, I still had this perception that ADHD was about naughty boys and bouncing hey. off the walls. And, and I'm like, well, that's not me. I don't bounce off the walls. I do, just in my head. Yeah. Um so yeah, so that that was the difference. So then I read a blog about uh, about ADHD. Then I saw somebody mm. else uh, come out as ADHD, and then I saw a post by Janet Murray where she just got a diagnosis and she listed uh, all of these in bullet points all of the things that she experienced. And I was like, oh, can mm -hmm. I swear on this podcast? I said, oh fuck, that's me. I showed it to my husband and he was like, yeah, that makes sense. And it was such a relief. I can't put it in any other way. It was liberating. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to stop trying so hard to do all the things that I can't do. And I'm just going to focus on the things that I can do. Mm. And that's when I invented Poster Grid. Wow. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. When I let go of all the stuff. So. 
so off i have been hearing this a lot lately um i mean i got diagnosed with loads of different mental health so you know mental health and neurodiversity are two different things mm. you know and, and often people confuse um adhd um autism mm. as a mental health condition but it's not mm. no um, it's not at all it's not mm. at all it, mm. it, it, it's completely different so for me I, I like to separate the categories of mental health diagnosed mental illness Mm -hmm. and neurodiversity the three different things and they they are very different yes. mental health is we all have mental health and we all need to look after it you mm -hmm. know every one of us um but we don't all have diagnosed mental illness and mm -hmm. we're not all neurodivert mm -hmm. so it, it, it's i it's important to firstly separate those three things um and understand that they're very very different but um have you been diagnosed or suggested that you you have a, a mental illness before um the ADHD yes but actually I I think so I I, I was diagnosed I had to I've had depression twice yeah. diagnosed as depressed depressed twice um and I think one of the episodes of depression occurred uh in my 20s but was a direct result of trauma so i think it was post-traumatic stress um but i didn't know that existed to be honest what i do know is that um i'd called the doctor because for whatever reason at that point in time i thought it would be a good idea to step out in front of traffic then no one would know i'd done it on purpose um and at that point i knew i was in a very dark place mm -hmm. and i needed to go and get help um so uh and that was the, my first kind of running with depression, but I'd had it for years and not recognized it. It felt normal to feel flat and numb and empty and hopeless and all of the things. Mm. Um, so to come out the other side of that and feel alive again was amazing. Mm. Uh, then the second time was only a few years ago um, and my life had changed. And again, it wasn't really trauma, but... Uh, there was a lot of stress happened in my life at the time. My dad had died. We relocated from Japan. My husband didn't have a visa and we had zero income. So I didn't know how to feed my child. And the culmination of all of those things um, led to my mental health deteriorating rapidly. And then, yet yeah, again, I was diagnosed with depression. And um, so I went to counselling that time. Um but I went very quickly because fortunately I, I, I saw it this time around, the second time around. But it was very different to um, ADHD. And I, I don't think at any point the two, the two weren't really confused because I didn't ever seek help for the issues that I had with ADHD. People just thought I was scatterbrained and disorganized and chaotic mm. and I talked mm. too much and I talked too fast, rather like now, sorry. Um, um, and they were all faults, of course. Every, everything about me was a fault. <laughs> you know? yeah, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, it, that is, it is that inner voice, isn't it? Yeah. What, what, our, what our brain, what our subconscious is telling us, is yeah. that actually, these things that you labelled as faults are actually really good qualities. Mm. Just, just part of who I am. I'm not. I can't change it. I'm not going to change it. So you know, either people like it or they don't. I can't change that. Yeah. And I'm not going to change me either. So. Did you ever try and change who you were? Yes, but in the ah, uh, that, that's that's a really good question. Mm. That's a really good question. When I was a kid, I was painfully shy because I didn't know how to have a conversation. I was terrified of everyone. I didn't. I didn't understand questions I think I, there's an audio processing thing going on there um so I didn't when people asked me a question I wasn't sure how to answer it and I used to panic and get a lot of anxiety around that which had a knock-on effect and caused lots of social anxiety so it was pain people called me painfully shy but I think I was an observer really at that time um but when I went to secondary school I wanted to be more confident I wanted to be more bubbly I wanted to be more chatty I wanted to be more like me at home in school but I didn't know how to be so it it it, it wasn't so much that I wanted to change myself but I did want to change how I projected myself mm -hmm. okay. um, and I, I remember there was a girl at school Helen White I'm still in touch with her so I hope she listens to this because she changed my life and I don't think she realizes how much 
Um, but I used to think she was amazing, yeah. right? She was always outside. She, oh, she wasn't always outside the head teacher's office, but I remember seeing her outside the head teacher's office and thinking she was really cool. And she wasn't bad or naughty or mean or horrible. She was really lovely, really chatty, really exuberant, and everybody loved her. And I was like, oh, she's amazing. I want to be like her. Yeah. And uh, one day she asked to work with me in a drama class. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe Helen wants to work with me. Yeah. Um, but that was when... I was able to be me. It wasn't so much that I wanted to be someone else. It was that I wanted to be me and I didn't know how to be publicly me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mimicked. I did mimic, hmm. but I mimicked to find myself rather than trying to hide myself. I hid myself as a very young child because I was afraid. Uh, hmm. I have to think about that. Yeah. I don't know. My mum's the opposite. I was really, really outgoing and my mum encouraged my individuality. But then when I got to school, that mm. was what I was bullied for. So mine went the other oh, way. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, no. It's like, he, he wants to stomp around in coloured tights, DMs and have an undercut and burn incense. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> and just be a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> But then I became painfully shy because I got bullied for those things. And yeah. Yeah. So mine was like the other way around, really. Yeah. And then it was, yeah. Isn't that but interesting? All then for you, because you said like you couldn't really, you were okay at home, but then you were more shy at school. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was I was very intimidated by everybody else. I think it didn't help that I was very short, still am. So everyone was like massive. Yeah. Um everybody looked like a giant and everybody oh, you. i'm five foot oh yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm five foot two right oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like just little diddy yeah. people walking i don't you know when you're growing up and you're a little kid and you're short you really are short you know i see like... some photos of me like i must have been about 11 and i'm up to people's shoulders <laughs> Yes. Yeah, a... kid. Like <laughs> I saw a picture the other day, and it's just me, and then the kids in my class, and I am up to their shoulders, and I'm yeah. kind of hiding slightly behind them, like, and they're all giants. And I'm like, oh yeah. my goodness! But it's the same now as an adult. But I'm so used to it, you know. It's like when I meet people off the internet now, they're like, oh my god, you're really small. Yeah, and I'm like, because yeah. I look, you know, the same height as everyone. But yeah, yeah, it's um confusing isn't it when you're mm. working online with people often people think i'm really tall yeah I'm like, no, no, i'm yeah. tiny <laughs> you're just, just a dot <laughs> like, size six to eight and like five two. oh i'm not quite size six to eight i'm quite <laughs> chunky around the middle <laughs> <laughs> so with, how did you find things like the academic side of school then like school mm. work and having to concentrate and and keep still because obviously you have no idea at this you know going through the yeah. school school system mm. um which i believe is a, a flawed system it is own. a very flawed <laughs> i could talk about that for hours i could talk about anything for hours to be honest yeah. so yeah how did you find like the academic side of things and having having to conform and sit still and and concentrate yeah very interesting question because mm. i um i didn't I did struggle at school. I struggled with things like handwriting and sitting down and doing exams. And so my great, academically, I was fortunate because academically I didn't actually struggle mm -hmm. and I could absorb quite well. But when it came to actually putting the stuff down um, on paper, I, I just couldn't be bothered. I, I just didn't want to. I would spend hours making front covers and I would spend hours choosing, you know, fonts and colors and yeah. nothing's changed. Nothing yeah. has changed. Spent, I would quite happily lose lots of time doing that. If I was writing an essay, I was more interested in, in the spaces on the essay than I was in, in the words. So how it visually looked, right? How it visually looked, looked but yeah. But as soon as I had to actually do the writing, I just, yeah. <laughs> and then I, I was told off because my handwriting was too messy. Then I was told, so then I'd try and write it neatly, which would take me too long. And I was told mm. off for being too slow. So then I was given timers to speed up and then I was messy again. Mm. Um, so I, I never, 
like I never achieved top grades. Mm. I did get some bottom grades. I was useless mm. at math. I could I couldn't I couldn't focus at all on math because I didn't understand mm. the basics. So I just tune out. Yeah. Just tune out. I didn't know I was tuning out though. You see, I was day. I was told off for being a daydreamer. Yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't I wasn't exactly doing this, rocking around all over the place. And I do that a lot more now as an adult. Mm -hmm. But back in school, I'd try and sit there really neatly so I wouldn't get told off. But then I wasn't processing anything because I was mm. being good. So I never excelled. I never did badly. I was just an average bog standard yeah. student doing my average bog standard things, trying desperately to not be noticed by the teachers. Mm. Um, but looking back, I would I think it would have been nice to have been encouraged to have been a bit more me, maybe. Mm. I think I would have learned more if I'd been able to doodle mm. when I was listening to the teacher. Yeah. You know, but I want you I No, you no, I was told off for doodling. Yes, you know. too. fiddling. Yeah. Fiddling, doodling, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my god, I used to take things apart all the time. <laughs> I got severely told off once and um it actually like triggered um a huge kind of limiting belief for me in school. Oh really? I was daydreaming and it was actually a maths lesson, funny enough. Yeah, maths, I was yeah. daydreaming and taking apart my pen because I wanted to know how it fit together. I did <laughs> And the spring pinged out and the teacher had asked me a question and I had I couldn't I didn't hear him. I was too engrossed in what I was doing. And he actually, um I said I don't know. And he said um he slammed his hand on the table and called me a demented slug. And that no! was better than me, yeah. And then was born this limiting belief that I'm I'm stupid. Oh yeah. my god. He actually wrote about it as well. But you know, oh that's a sort god. of that you know, I, I don't think schools would get away with that nowadays. No, no. See, my, my son, like, he's autistic. He's ADHD as well. But the school's mm. quite accommodating. They they let him yeah. do his fiddling and do his... He's got, like, yeah. things. They, they accept the fact that his fine motor skills aren't there yet. And, yeah. you know, it's all... It's all, it's all good. Like, he, he can walk, walk around the class if he needs to. And Yeah. yeah. It has changed a lot, I it think. Has. You know, there was... There wasn't... I didn't know it existed mm. back um when I was at school no. and I think back now it's like if I had if they had the knowledge they had now would my life would schooling and would my life look a lot different yeah. so I like to go and analyze things I've been very reflective lately have you been like that like yes not like dwelling on the past or anything like that but just looking at things with with new eyes and, and a new perspective yeah it is like it's it's like putting on glasses like if you if you if you, so you put on glasses and you're like oh my god I can see for the first time I, I've not been able to see for ages that's what this is like it's like you look back on your life and everything becomes slightly clearer and I do I have wondered would my life have been different and yes it would but I'm not I'm not 100 sure it would have been any better yeah um yeah. just different I think Going back then, like the generational, when you look back at stigma associated with neurodiversity and being different, I'm not sure having a diagnosis as a child back in the 70s and 80s would have been helpful because it was much more of a stigma. I would have been separated from yeah. people. I think perhaps people would have expected less of me. The expectations would have been lower. So I might mm -hmm. not have pushed them and they were already low because I was a girl right um yeah. so that 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 was something that like I really that's, this is a whole new that's a whole other thing isn't it um but yeah. I think I think had I've had a diagnosis as well expectations mm -hmm. would have been even more reduced mm -hmm. nobody would have expected me to stay on at school I don't I really honestly believe that um and I could be wrong maybe I don't know, but this is this is the story that I've invented. But maybe I've invented that story to feel good about the fact that nobody knew and yeah. everybody did the best that they could yeah. with the information that they had. Yeah, exactly that. Like, it's parents, isn't it? It's like when you look at your parents and you, you look at, you know, eat yourself as a parent. Like, yourself yeah. enough, like, you know, you do the best with the information you have at the time. Yeah. Um, and then for me, like, reflecting isn't, 
going back to to beat yourself with a stick oh i should have done better i should have done this could have done that should have would have could have you know mm. it's gone you can't change it but it's for me it's just reflection and it's about oh wow look at that and like where where then i am now and, and how that journey it. has progressed like, yeah what yeah. what i've learned because of that like i've learned a lot because i didn't know yeah like i've i've developed lots of strategies that i wouldn't have developed yeah. if i'd known i've you know there's a lot of I, I think and and it's been actually i really enjoyed the privilege of letting go last mm. year I was like, right, I don't have to keep trying anymore to be organized. Mm. I can't, I'm rubbish at it. I fail. I, I can't, I'm constantly setting myself up for failure. And that's right. not good for anyone's mental health. Mm. It's not good for, it's not good for self-esteem. It's not good for business. It's not mm. good for anything. So as soon as I took that off the table and just accepted, mm. that's not something I'm going to master in my lifetime unless I only focus on that and let go of all the yeah. stuff that I enjoy and I'm good at and what benefit is that to the world it's like that's the thing I don't understand about school going back to the whole schooling system yeah. why I know maths and English and science are important yeah. but why if a child is greatly skilled at say athletics are they then forced to get an extra tutor to be better at maths? Why not give them a better tutor, an extra tutor mm -hmm. to be even better at what they're good at? Yes. Right. I was brilliant at music, but was denied music lessons and had extra lunchtime maths lessons because I was rubbish yeah. at maths. I'm like, oh my God, I could be like a yeah. genius musician. Nobody would know. <laughs> I'm not. Focusing <laughs> on, on what you're good at and what you enjoy. I'm a believer of that. Yes, and, you know, me too. We all have our different strengths, weaknesses, things that we're really good at, things that we're okay at that will get done because they need mm. to get done. And then things that, you know, we just, you know, not particularly enjoy or, or, or don't, our weaknesses for us, maybe. It doesn't, <laughs> you know, to say things we can't do because I don't, I don't like to put that kind of no but there's, there's, there's but the stuff that's hard the stuff some stuff's harder than others some stuff's more enjoyable and yes we do sometimes yeah. have to do the hard stuff and sometimes we have to do the stuff we don't want to do i i get that yeah. but trying to be good at stuff that you're not really cut out for at the expense of stuff that you are born to do <laughs> just doesn't make any sense to me like, what sort of things do you find difficult then um gosh lots of things <laughs> organization oh god i'm useless i can't find yeah. anything I, I i honestly i can't find anything it's it's it is it's it's a joke even if it's right in front of me i, I can't see it if i like i'll ask um so for example right now i've got a, a lovely team of people helping me with post grid and uh, we've got um a whole load of testimonials and last week i was doing a post or something I was doing something that I needed testimonials for and I'd contacted one of the team to say where are the testimonials I'd only asked her like the week before and she'd sent me a link but I couldn't find the link anymore she gets it so she sent me the link again and then of course I lost it and I'm like it's, it's right there and I'm like but where's the link then I open the link then I can't find the testimonials it's in a Trello board I can't I can't see Trello it's everything's in something else oh god it's a I, nightmare no it Hate sends it. me my brain do lally yeah i can't i can't look I, at it um i i i like pen and paper me too <laughs> <laughs> not that i can write notes i'm um, terrible at writing notes but yeah pen and paper that's what i've got here yeah. me and and i have to write stuff there you know doing spider diagrams really helps yes. yes i've got a big whiteboard for like if yeah. I've got, like when I was doing a planning, a, what was I planning in the summer? Oh, it must have been post grid Academy. I don't know. I was doing something anyway. But I went into the garden and had like big sheets of paper on the grass mm -hmm. so that I could write everything down in big, big, in big. Yeah. <laughs> in big. Because if it's small and tucked away or in a box, yeah. it's gone. I've forgotten it's there. I have, yeah. I have really bad. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you need to put everything in Trello. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I was like no, no. 
I, I need I, I will take a picture of what I've written down and send it to you <laughs> yeah that's it I can't I can't do Trello I just can't. I mean I'm, I'm sure my, my my lovely lovely gorgeous group of people yeah. must hate me because I can't I just can't use yeah. and I think they think I'm just being difficult yeah but it's not it's actual brain processing thing it it's is physically I physically kind of... can't do it <laughs> like, it's yeah. like, and I can't explain it it's like it and it's like you know it's the same when I was growing up and um, I'd like go tidy your room I didn't know where to start. I didn't know where to put things. I'd put something away and then I wouldn't remember where it was anymore because it was hidden. So in order to find it, I'd have to mess up my room again to look for it. And then I'd get into trouble for having a messy room because I couldn't find anything, but I needed everything out so I could see it. And Trello is like putting everything in a box, in a box, in a box, in a box. And, oh. It's a nightmare. Yeah. How are you with like goals and goal setting and stuff like that? I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm better i'm better actually mm. same rubbish i think it depends on the goal mm. so in the past i didn't trust myself with goals because i didn't trust myself to accomplish things because i never i was rubbish at finishing yeah. actually i think that was probably it i'd struggle to start things and i'd struggle to finish things the bit in the middle i was okay with um and because I'd struggled to finish things, I hated setting myself goals because it's that whole thing where I always felt like I failed. I'd let myself down. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this by the end of the week and the end of the week would come. And maybe I wouldn't have even started. But now it's a it's a little bit different. Um, I set myself goals and accept that sometimes I'll hit it, hit them and sometimes I won't. And it's not a failure to not hit a goal but I'm not going to get anywhere without it. So I do, I do set them. I don't know about, I don't know. I set them, but I'm still not confident. I have a, I have a little bit of a mindset shift with that I need to make, I think with goal setting. Hmm. Yeah. It's uh I know what you mean about that. Um, internal kind of feeling that you failed if you don't hit one, but mm. yeah, the way that you put it is it doesn't matter. If you yeah, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. No, because yeah. it's a way. It's a way of measuring whether or not you're on target, and it's a way of measuring whether or not what you're doing is working. So, mm. particularly when it comes to business, I think it's quite helpful. But because I've spent so much of my life not quite doing what I set out to do, right. <laughs> I, I, there's like that whole there's a reluctance for me to set a target because or a goal because I think, yeah. well, I'm just gonna. I'm not going to get there, but I've been much better since discovering I had ADHD. I have ADHD because I can set goals that hmm. are doable for me. Yeah, I don't try and organise anything anymore, which helps. Yeah, okay. Actually, so going with the flow a lot more. Yeah, yeah. I just I have like a more of a an abstract kind of. I mean, over there, I've got, you know, for December, I want to make five sales for December. So I'm on yeah. four. So that's yeah. great. Um, yeah. 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 So yeah. I've got that. And then so now that I'm on four, I'm like, right, OK, we're only on the 10th of December. So actually, I'm going to try and get eight sales. That would be yeah. nice. So I've increased it. Um, I may get it. I may not. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But um, well, it does a little bit. But... <laughs> Why did you? It's a bit of a change of conversation. Why did you start Poster Grid? Just let's talk a little bit more about what it is and why why you started it. Because uh, you said you were a primary school teacher. Oh uh, yeah, I was an early years. Oh, so I was an early uh, years. really quite, not not a real early years teacher. I was an early years teacher in Japan, so right. not qualified at all. Okay. Um, but I just I love working with kids, and mm -hmm. um, I used to love making my own resources and making my own lessons and building curriculums. And I opened yeah. my own school over there, and oh, wow. the whole the whole, th the whole the whole thing. Like I, it, it, I've had this very random uh, exist, like uh, I suppose relationship with design in that I love making and designing things, but have never felt like I'm a real designer. Okay. So rather than being a real designer, I've created businesses so that I can design for them, right? So I've had a cafe, I've had a school, I've had a consultancy business, I've taught business English, I've done loads of things, loads of things. You've always been entrepreneurial then. 
Yeah, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like the idea of, I love starting things. I love doing new things and trying things out and seeing where they'll go without a goal, <laughs> without like a specific idea behind it, just see where it yeah. goes. Yeah. Um, and then I'll sit there for hours designing, thinking, God, wouldn't it be great to do this for a job? And then um, when I moved back to the UK, um, I, 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 said, I think I mentioned before, uh, we went through this period of my husband didn't have a visa. I couldn't work because my son was three, had complex needs. We had no other care for him and we didn't qualify for any financial support. So then all our savings vanished and I had no income. I didn't know how to feed my child. I called a crisis line begging right. for help mm. and we didn't qualify for support. Thank you thank you crisis line um so i relied on food parcels from my mom and mm. a donation of 50 pound a month from my brother and um that that was it that's what that was what we lived off basically it was pretty tough we didn't even have a bed right it was it was pretty rough um but during that time i obviously needed to make an income and the only skill i had that i could do from home that I didn't need a certification for in Britain because for some reason here you need continuous personal development and certificates for absolutely everything mm -hmm. was design. So I um, did one of Helen Pritchard's five-day challenges, yeah. Started went on LinkedIn and started trying to sell design services to early years educators. I thought I'll sell it to educators because I know them. I can make resources for them. I've already done it. And that's where that began. But a lot of educators are on Instagram. And Instagram's a visual platform, so it seemed yeah. like a good fit to showcase mm -hmm. design skills on a visual platform where my ideal customers were. It was like perfect, except that I hated Instagram. Hated mm -hmm. it. I, I could, couldn't make sense. Of it. Yeah. Why? I, mean, I, I couldn't make sense. Why of it. LinkedIn? <laughs> yeah, I, I was great on LinkedIn. LinkedIn was brilliant. I was getting leads like no non-stop on LinkedIn, but on Instagram, nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. And um I really struggled with that. And I think I'd put a lot of pressure on myself because I think with LinkedIn, you can type something, post it, the end. If you make a okay. visual post, you can reuse it millions of times on LinkedIn. But on mm -hmm. Instagram, I needed to make a new picture for every post plus yeah. I needed to write a new post plus I needed hashtags yeah. then there's stories and videos and highlights and I was like oh my god it's so much work and did I get a single lead nothing nada so I'm like what there's no return on investment here it's rubbish but I was like I've got to do something there's something here in Instagram that I'm missing and my customers are here and I was like, right, I'll try checkerboard style. So I was like trying checkerboard style and that wasn't working. Yeah. And I was like, try rose. And I had my branding, I redid all my branding and nothing. It always looked shit, right? Yeah. It always looked messy and- I will look at mine then. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> That's the, no judgment at <laughs> all. But <laughs> like mine, it just looked messy because yeah. what happens is you, even if you've got all your branding done, every mm. single post is different because it's like a series of thumbnails. Sometimes yeah. by chance, they all blend together. They all go together really well and it looks really tidy. And then other times, like you'll put on a selfie or you'll put on a picture or you'll put yeah. on some other post and you, it just looks messy again. Yeah. And I'm like, there must be a way to just have like a consistently nice looking feed without me having to think about what color do I need to do next, right? So that's pretty much where Poster Grid was born. I accidentally posted uh, two rows and there mm. was like the middle post, one on top of the other blended together by mistake. And I was like, oh. So then I just went and played and then I don't know how long it took. I was like, um, I found this way to just post consistently without having to plan, right? So I hate planning and rubbish at planning. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I can just like do this. And then it doesn't matter whether or not I post every day. It doesn't matter whether or not I post every month. It, it doesn't matter. I can just put my, con it doesn't matter what content to put out. I can plan it. I don't have to plan it. And I've got like, a my grid will always look amazing. And then That's I said to him, interesting. And it was like June last year. And I said to my husband, I said, 
this is amazing. I can't believe nobody else is doing this. Yeah. So I was like on Instagram then trying to find other people doing the same. Couldn't find anything else out there that was the same. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, I could do this for other people, but I don't know how. And that was then, then I didn't know what to do. Then I got the fear. So uh, I, was, I, I, I just started thinking, well, I'll just keep doing it for myself and see what happens. And then suddenly I started getting links, uh, not links, leads on yeah. Instagram. Um, so that was June when I started it. By October, I was fully booked. And this was not selling poster grid. This was just doing my regular color branding so the stuff. The grid then, the poster grid, was getting you sales for your... For, for my other stuff, yeah. And the weird thing was, so this is where I learned the power of Instagram, right? The weird thing was the sales I was getting was not from the people following me. It was from complete strangers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh... Instagram's not a social media platform. It's a search engine, right? I was like, how did I miss that? Mm. So if people are searching for something that you offer and then yeah. they come to your grid or they come to your profile and your profile looks great, then they're going to be like, oh, hi, can you work with me? It's like, mm. oh, my God, I've got to do this. Then out came Clubhouse and everyone was then going, I was like, oh, I've really got to do something with this. So I joined a sales course that Helen Pritchard was running with a guy called Pete Scott. And on day three, I said, um, I've got this thing, but I don't know how to sell it. Right. And Helen was like, I'll partner with you. I was like, okay, you've got uh, an audience. I don't. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Deal. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> I like, I don't, I don't have a clue how to do this. So, yeah. <laughs> That, that was basically, so it all came out of, A, me having ADHD and not being able to do basic stuff, yeah. B, needing Instagram and not knowing how to do it, mm -hmm. and uh, C, just playing, playing with an idea. I knew what I wanted because of an accidental post. Weirdly, when we first launched it, somebody said, isn't this the same as Aldi? And I was like, what? So I went on Instagram, looked at Aldi, and Aldi have got this beautiful seamless grid. And I was like, oh, no, somebody else is already doing it. But it's not the same. They have to actually take lots of pictures and blend them all together. And then they, they've got, like, weird, like, gradients going in there. It's okay. it's not it's not seamless. I'm like, oh, they're not doing it at all. It turns so, out <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, how much are they paying to get the grid done? They could pay me. Pay yeah, exactly. millions instead. And uh, dark net dark Netflix are trying as well, but also not not as good. And I'm like, dark I've Netflix. Pay I've me. noticed that you no, know, but I can do it seamlessly for you, you know. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm big, go. Pay me. Yeah. Give me your millions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah strange things can happen just to, yeah i know you being shameless and going um i can do that better for you hello yeah, yeah. do you know what actually that, that's basically all it should take is that i'm just i'm going to do that i'm just going to contact yeah. them and say i can do this better for you yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if, I if, you know, got nothing to lose. No, I mean, what they're going to say? No, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I can do this better for you all by myself. Yeah, don't even you don't even need a huge big marketing team. Just send me your content. It's all yeah. done. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, I will. I'm going to now. I'm just yeah. going to. I love all these conversations. Yeah. <laughs> create these ideas, and it's just like. Well, you've just said something. I was like, well, why haven't you done that then? Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Why haven't I done it? Do you know why? Fear. It's fear. just fear. It's, it's fear. fear. It's all fear. It stops us from doing yeah, it really does. so much stuff. You know, really does. Um, I've spent, like, some of my morning emailing um, some certain people that I have celebrities that I want on my podcast. Oh, I brilliant. I haven't got a huge <laughs> podcast, but, you know, um, we have we're one, of the, one of the same mentors. Dan mm. Meredith, and he teaches us to be shameless. Oh, and, fabulous! And just, and just, I'm going to irritate people until they say yes. <laughs> oh my god, just do it, do it! Oh, that's so exciting! <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> be <laughs> shameless, shameless, shameless. Just be shameless, and it's it's that fear, isn't it? Of yeah, putting people on a pedestal, thinking that they're above us. Yeah, because they're, that goes they're, back to that you know, goes way back to when I was a kid as well, where I thought all yeah. the other kids were somehow better yeah. than me or yes. knew more and than me. Yeah, there's a connection there, and it's like, well, why? You know, you're putting Audi on a, a pedestal, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it is. 
we do this as, as human beings and, and I'm guilty of it as well. So, oh, I can't, I can't message them. I can't yeah. message them. I'm little old me and they're, they're big old them. And it's like, well, actually, they're run by little old people, aren't they? Not little old people, but little little people, just little, just, I'm just people. I'm a human being, and they're a human yeah. being. You yeah. know, we both bleed the same way. We both take a shit in the morning. Yeah. We're human beings. Yeah. You know, and it That's is so like true. that fear that stops us doing so much, so many things in our life, and and thinking about the worst case scenario, and that rege that rejection. Oh, rejection comes RSD. In. <laughs> Yeah, which um rejection sensitivity, um, oh yes, which we'll, we'll, we'll link this to. And it's yeah. it's that fear that stops us. And instead of saying like what's the worst that can happen, what's the best that can happen, they yeah. could say yes. And it opens up this whole door of opportunity when when you're willing to put yourself out there and step out that comfort zone of of the shackles of your own mind. And in mm. one thing, when I've done it's, those things and just gone, I'm gonna do it. It's so I true. Me, like I don't think will happen. They just they, they start happening, and all these doors start opening of opportunity, and one thing leads to another, and you you've got that momentum. But <laughs> yes. it's like, and so yeah, let's just rejection feels like shit. It, it does, uh, but you know what? It happens, doesn't it? Yeah. And you know, <laughs> yeah, it weirdly, that, weirdly, like if I if I contacted like some great big company and they said no, I so wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't even upset me. So yeah. what, what, what I, maybe the fear is that they would say yes. Maybe that's the fear. Ah, there you go. And then we so get on to the I have to deliver. Fears. Like, it's one thing to say, oh, my God, I could so do that better. It's another thing to actually do it, isn't it? <laughs> but you know what? If they paid me enough, I could pay for, like, amazing designers to come in and do it. I'll just teach them the method and say, off you go. Yep. like so it doesn't have to be all you this this is something that i've realized this year i'm like oh my god why did it take me so long to discover this right yeah. i was always like charging the smallest possible amount imagining me doing all of the work right and think well i could only do that so i i have to do it all and so i charge the lowest possible amount i realized if people paid me more i can pay for people to help me do it which means i can do a better job which means it's worth more money yes why, why did it take me so long to figure that out? Why? Uh, I have come to the same realisation. <laughs> I always used to call myself a lone wolf. I didn't like to be, I didn't like to work with people. I couldn't trust anybody. No one can do it. <laughs> Crap. I like, like so many people can do it better than me. Why don't I just like pay for other people to do it? I don't to do all these things myself. I to do it for and with me yeah yeah do it with me work with it yeah. just like it's so much more fun doing it with people as well yeah exactly so, so talk to me about this rejection then oh. come towards the, the, the wrapping up of our podcast mm. let's, let's briefly talk about this um rejection what did you call it rejection sensitivity dysphoria it's part of adhd and i've mm. never heard of it until about a year ago and i was like oh it's another one of those it's another one of those acronyms it's another one of those things and then i read about it and i was like oh dear and it's this it's this idea where um if you're rejected one you feel it massively right most people do dislike being rejected and feel it massively but with re rejection sensitivity you perceive rejection perhaps where there isn't any, you project rejection onto other people and try to prevent them feeling rejected at the expense of perhaps even your own safety, which yeah. is what I have done. Um, uh, oh, I've lost my thread now because I got stuck on that one. Oh, my brain gets stuck on that loop. Um, sorry, lost totally lost my thread. That's okay. Just Yeah, it, 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 it's... Uh, rejection sensitive. So you per you perceive rejection where there isn't any. You feel rejection more strongly, perhaps, or have an uh, an over a very emotional yeah. response to rejection. You try to protect other people from feeling rejection. Um, yeah. And then there's another one as well that I've forgotten. Um, but that third one has impacted my life massively, um, particularly as a teenager. And I was so worried about upsetting boys. 
that I would put myself in harm's way um, in order to protect their feelings. Uh, of course, they didn't care about my feelings. Mm. Um, but I was so... You're part two coming on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the... There's so much more to talk about this. Yeah, it's it's a massive topic, and I, I, when I when I learned about rejection sensitivity, it, it gave me. Um, I, I was able to forgive myself a lot. Not that I'd ever done anything wrong, but I felt a lot. I felt so much more at peace with myself for decisions that I'd made, or choices that I'd made, or feelings that I'd had, or beliefs that I'd held about myself or about others that I hadn't had before I knew it. So when people talk about um, labels and I don't agree with labels and labels are bad and we shouldn't be labeling people, I'm just going to put it out there that I completely disagree. Okay. A label is not something that is limiting somebody. It's not, right. it's not putting people in a box and saying that's where you belong. What it is is it's giving you a lens with which to see yourself and with which to see others so that we can communicate better and accommodate each other better mm -hmm. so that we can grow we're not we're not saying you are adhd therefore you belong in this box and you can never yeah. get out of it it's like you yeah. have adhd here's the right food that you need so that you can grow <laughs> right? you know, that's, that's really uh, interesting and i'd really like to do right we we're going to wrap this up for today's episode mm -hmm. but we are going to come back and we're going to do a whole episode on um, about rejection and labels. Okay, sounds fun. Yeah, and how that um, labels are perceived in society. Mm. Yes. We share some conflicting views. Oh, do we? Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. I love conflicting yeah. views. Yes. Oh, excellent. That's, that's brilliant. So, yes. Yes. So just thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no, uh, thank you. It, it, I can't believe it's gone so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I do talk so much. I'm really sorry. No, don't apologise. Gosh, absolutely no. It's good. It's, that's the whole point of podcasts, isn't it? I suppose it's, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's talking, you know. And yeah. when we're talking to each other, we're learning, aren't we? We're learning mm. and we're growing and we're, and we're connecting as human mm. beings. And that's the, the whole point of, podcast is to bring people yes. together and to yeah. talk and grow and love. yes okay. so thank you so much um, no thank you um and you can um find uh colette's uh info um in the episode notes so you can go and follow her and find out more about her thank you so much for listening watching um another episode of that inner voice and we will be back with part two <laughs> very soon <laughs> that was another episode of that inner voice do join me next time on the next episode bye for now